Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquitt and in this video, just like the previous video that I did with backwards engineering ancient looking uh, scenes and, and objects, I want to talk about how we can kind of backwards engineer futuristic scenes and objects. And before we even start, I want to definitely reference the fact that futuristic could literally be anything. So ultimately, because it hasn't happened yet, we don't know what it could look like. But these are kind of playing more on the common tropes that we build and we look at when we do futuristic. What are some of the concepts behind what happens uh, in futuristic looking scenes that make them appear to us to be something that would happen years to come? So let's start taking a look at some of these images here. And just like in the last one, uh, this is from Tron, from the, from the movie Tron. But I asked the students, like, what are we seeing here? Like, what are the materials? What are the colors that are going on? What is happening? What really makes something look futuristic? And a lot of things that I'll get, of course, is the materials being things like glass and rubber and metal. A lot of things that are man-made, right? Stuff that isn't just going to come naturally out of the ground. So anything futuristic tends to be very man-made. So something that is obviously constructed or built uh, using machinery or other advanced tools. Now, another big one, of course, is the lighting. So you'll see there's a lot of glowy lights, okay? So that really often sells a futuristic scene is, is the type of lighting. And it's interesting how they try to do a lot of contrast in a lot of futuristic scenes. We get very dark, dark areas with very light areas on top of the fact, too. So those are important things to keep in mind when it comes to that. And then color-wise, you'll see that in this case, we're dealing with a uh, complementary color scheme but almost always it seems, and I don't know why it is, but this is how, how it works. Monochromatic tends to be a very, very popular color scheme when doing futuristic. And we'll see some examples of that break that concept, but a lot of these kind of follow suit. So here's another image. Now this could be something that we would see today. It's not super, super futuristic, but it is something that could relatively exist. But the idea is it looks like it could be something from the future. And the, and the reason is we see a lot of reflective surfaces, right? A lot of lighting, a lot of very shiny looking stuff because shiny stuff, right? So unless it's kind of water in real life or ice or something to that effect, we don't see a lot of super shiny things in real life. So when we see them on other objects, it kind of feels more man-made, right? So we're kind of getting that effect. But once again, as I mentioned, very monochromatic. We're just playing with blues and that's about it. So let's take a look at the next image. So this image is actually from Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is one of those few games that, um, or few styles total anyways, that, that basically create both an ancient and a futuristic at the same time. And so when you're trying to do that, you can see right here they do a pretty good job of that where we kind of, we get this futuristic, but it's like almost we went back in the past, like maybe a Horizon Zero Dawn thing, where it feels almost like you're in the past because it's so far in the future of like this destroyed futuristic scene. And they do kind of break, once again, that monochromatic theme. So this is an example of a futuristic scene that does kind of break a lot of the tropes, but that's why Final Fantasy always has a very interesting um, uh, thing going on. Now, in the next image here, so let's scoop ahead here, we'll see that this has, once again, a monochromatic feel, more of like a warm, orangey kind of thing. But you'll notice that we get two different, totally types of futuristic. And you, two, you know, these two types tend to be either utopian, which if I was to say, go back to this other one over here, right? So our subway scene here feels more utopian. Well, we see something like this, which is dystopian or more kind of like uh, blown up or broken or whatever. So you can see that these, uh, you know, the way the metal is, the things are more grimy. Obviously with a planet exploding and a, and a ship exploding, yes, that feels dystopian. But we still get the effect with the way that the lighting is super dark, where we'll see in contrast to uh, utopian, it's usually the lighting is very bright, right? Both monochromatic, but we'll see that the color schemes tend to be cool in uh, utopian and warm in dystopian. So we can keep seeing like some of this stuff in some of these other images. So here is another utopian right so very bright uh very like i said cool colors that we're using here and it looks like obviously everything in here is built out of metal or glass or something shiny and that's why we really get that that feel of it being futuristic and this is also not organic right we can see this in very man-made so these are a lot of the themes now you could get a lot of curvy lines and stuff like you see in this and get some odd looking shapes you know whatever but a lot of times too we see very straight lines or consistent feel so if everything's something's curvy then everything kind of is curvy uh, if some things are straight then a lot of things are straight um, this is a dystopian one this is actually from uh, unreal tournament 
it could have you could have if you saw this thought it was Gears of War 2 because I think they use the same geometry in the two different games but a very dystopian feel as a lot of things are broken down darker kind of scene in general beat up looking stuff uh, Star Trek you know what's really interesting this is being Star Trek Next Generation for as old as this show is this still could hold up today as being something futuristic so you got to hand it to Star Trek for doing a pretty good job of creating these concepts well before they even existed now this is some sample work that I found from an artist page obviously as we can see sample written all over it the artist doesn't want us to see it Keith Duke Cox down here says his name is um, pretty old actually it's 2008 where he did these but I really like to show them because he's got a couple of them if I actually skip over here you see these two the reason why I want to show these these are all hand painted textures and what I like about it is he spends so much time making them unique so yes you can make a shape like this while you painted it right but then if you duplicate it it might look exactly the same he spends the time and tries to make each shape just slightly different so the highlights and the shadows are just slightly different so I just really wanted to point that out that if you're really trying to sell realism the truth is in order to sell realism you have to spend the time to make things look unique even when they are the same so just little subtle things that can kind of help we see a lot of different layers of panels he's playing off of the light he's got a little light flare effect in all these so that you can't use them because uh, it makes it bright in the corner so even if you tried to use them or whatever um, but that's just it's a cool effect but you wouldn't necessarily want to put these little lights in the corners of your textures especially if you wanted to tile because it would look odd that we just have these lights just in these one parts of the texture and not on the other side now this is from wipeout uh, a game on the playstation but we can see right here another mo monochromatic scheme this is actually a certain mode in the game where they made it look like this you'll see in another image this uh, skip ahead here this is also wipeout uh, they use a lot of colors this is kind of like a racing game kind of concept where if you have a lot of shapes and colors it feels like you're moving faster when they go flying by your face so that's why they kind of do this but if you haven't noticed most of the other images tend to be as i said before very monochromatic uh, kind of have more of a set style doesn't kind of go crazy with all these different things to look at or whatever but the idea <clears throat> ultimately is, is once again futurist doesn't exist so it could be whatever you want it to be technically speaking but usually you're going to be following some some style right somebody's created a style you're going to have to really understand what you're looking at and backwards engineer it so if you want to create your own style you really have to understand what you're looking at and why um, you're going to do it that way and then just replicate that over and over and over again in your work so as i said in the ancient one same thing you really need to understand first what you're looking at so that you can backwards engineer and apply it to your own work and then be successful when you create your uh, content so hopefully this video helped you guys out and i'll guys i'll see you in the next one